Hello guys and welcome to my channel. This tutorial is about the use of Epanet. Okay, so Epanet is a software or water distribution analysis network software that you can use to do all sort of analysis of your distribution network prior to going to the field to carry out some of the uh, physical processes but then you can do all sort of simulations varying different kind of parameters within the software and to have the most optimal form of the parameters and data and even the key sizes that you need to put in in the design to make sure you have an efficient system so in this tutorial i'm going to solve a simple problem okay but then before then i'm going to talk about the most basic things that you need to know when dealing with Epanet. Like I said, it's a very basic software developed by the United States Environmental Protection Agency and it's an open source. You can download it once you just come to this epa.gov. You can just come over here and just go straight down here. You can see the download links over here. So like I said, before we go deep into the software, we just want to explain the basic principles, the definitions of some of the key terms, the pipes, the nodes, the network, what is a looped and a branched network, and what is Epanet on its own, and what are the analysis methods of water distribution networks. Some of the key basic elements, including pipes, pumps, nodes, we're going to talk about valves and different kind of tanks. So it's just going to be the most basic then i will couple it up with a very simple example that you can just follow along so as a basic definition we're just going to look at this very basic definition what is a water distribution network so a water distribution network is comprised of a number of links connected together to form loops and branches loops or branches so you can we are going to look at take a look at the water distribution network in the next slide and then these links contain pumps fittings valves and other elements that you can find along they are distributed along a particular network so a link is simply a segment of the network that has a constant flow and no branches just get the definition, a constant flow and no branches. Each link may contain one or more pipes with different diameters connected in series. So that's the very basic definition. And that's what differentiates it with a pipe because pipes, a pipe is a segment of a link that has a constant flow and constant diameter and no branches. Okay, so just take note of the key terms over here, constant flow and constant diameter and no branches. While in the case of a link, it is different diameters, even though it has constant flow, but no branches. Okay, so let's take a look at a pipe. So this is a pipe, constant length, constant diameter. And then this is a link, constant length, but varying diameter. We can have different kind of diameter, diameter one, diameter two, and diameter three, all connected in series according to the previous definition. So let's take a look at what are nodes. Okay, a node, they are just the endpoints. So nodes are just the endpoints of pipe sections where two or more links are joined. Water can enter or leave the networks at these nodes. Okay, so at any given point within the node, water can enter the network or water can leave the network. And then we have loops. Loops are closed circuit. Uh, it's, the loop is a closed circuit consists of a series of links in which the demand nodes are supplied from more than one pipes okay so it's just a closed system containing pipes or links and they are contained within they are connected by nodes so the path it the path or what we call the water path is just represent the way or the route through which the demand nodes are reached from the source from the source nodes so just the routes in which the demands are taken from the system or from the network is just the, is what we call the path or the flow direction outside of the network so next we have this is a complete water distribution networks where we have the reservoir we have the nodes and we have different types of pipes you can see them along connected so this is an example of water distribution network and then among the major basic principles you should understand in water distribution network is the continuity equation okay the continuity process so the algebraic sum of the flow rates in the pipes meeting at a node together with any external flows is zero so that's just it what comes in must be equal to what goes out okay so whatever comes in must be equal to what goes out so look at it q1 plus q2 is equal to q3 plus d so q1 that is coming in and q2 that is coming in is equal to q3 that is going out and d that is also the demand on the node 
and that's going out so it should be this summation okay so sum of this must be equal to uh, sum of this that is coming in okay what goes in must it be equal to what comes uh, what goes out and the demand should be q1 q2 minus q3 so if you just want to rearrange this you can have this so a demand node is connected the node is connected to three supply pipes so you can see the three supply pipes and then we have the demand node uh, by the side of it so next is we have the principle of energy conservation so for all the path around the closed loops so this is a closed loop okay where we have different kind of nodes connected with the pipe and then the water circles the direction of water doesn't matter uh, we'll just see in a bit how it affects the energy conservation so the accumulated energy loss including minor losses minus any energy gain or hits generated by the pumps must be zero that's the principle so a part of a loop network closed loop and given total head loss of each link as hf so we can just see it hf so we have the hf1 hf2 hf3 and hf4 now there's basic assumption over here that assuming counterclockwise to be positive so counterclockwise is positive so this clockwise is negative hf1 is negative hf4 is negative okay negative negative and then this positive positive so the summation of all of the energy must be equal to zero that's the assumption and then we have branched water distribution networks so usually in branched water distribution networks there is only one path okay one route coming from the main source and then this one route is now distribution is now distributing it to each and every one of the nodes where the demands are being carried out and then generally let's talk about epanet okay epanet is a program for analyzing the hydraulic and the water quality behavior of water distribution networks developed by this we've just talked about it and it's a public domain software you can find this software the downloads from here we just explained so what does it do it analyzes the water distribution networks this means determine determination of the flow in each link determination of the pressure head at each node this is what it does and then we have additional uh, outcomes to include the simulation of chlorine concentration in each link and at each node we'll be able to discover or to to understand the water quality parameters or behavior of the water within the pipeline or within the pipe network using epanet is one of its key features this brings us to the main elements of a water distribution networks where we have the source reservoir the pumps the pipes the, the nodes the tanks and the valves so all of these have its own definition and its usage so let's take a look at quickly what reservoirs are reservoirs are nodes that represent an external source or sink of water to the network they are used to model lakes rivers and groundwater aquifers reservoirs can also serve as water quality source points okay so the primary inputs properties for a reservoir are hydraulic head and initial water quality that's just what, what we are after the hydraulic head is the main parameter we consider when dealing with reservoirs in water distribution networks okay and and one thing to note in, in reservoirs is that based, because a reservoir is a boundary point to a network, its head and water quality cannot be affected by what happens within the network. Okay, so whatever happens within the network is not going to be affecting the reservoir as far as there's no water coming into the reservoir from the network. So then we have the tanks. Tanks are nodes with storage capacity where the volume of stored water can vary with time during the simulation okay so during the simulation of course water is going to go out and maybe water is going to come in through a tank and this is being this can be determined during the simulation so the main properties that we're after during a simulation within a tank is the bottom elevation the diameter of the tank the initial and the minimum and maximum water level okay then we have the initial water quality we can take all this at the beginning okay so this is the most basic parameters or requirement or properties that we are looking at when dealing with tanks so the principles there are the principal computed outputs in tanks are the total head which we can which is the surface elevate water surface elevation and then we have the water quality these are the key parameters that we are targeting when dealing with tanks the total head and the water quality so tanks are required to operate within their minimum and maximum levels Okay, so we have minimum level on each tank and we have maximum level on each tank. So for, for some examples, you will be given some of these parameters. So this is just for your own information. And then we have the pipes. Pipes convey water from one point in the network to another. Okay, so Epanet assumes that 
all pipes are full at all times. So that's the basic assumption that Ethernet gives to all pipes. Now the principles of hydraulic input parameters for pipes, the parameters we take note of is diameter, pipe diameter, pipe length, roughness coefficient, and the initial status. That means, is it an open pipe? Is it a closed pipe? Does it contain a check valve? Or what kind of valve does it contain? So these are the key parameters we pay attention to when dealing with pipes. Now, the water quality inputs for pipes are the bulk reaction coefficient and the wall reaction coefficient. This is when you want to talk about the water quality in details. But for this, this is just for your information. What are the key parameters we pay attention to when dealing with pipes? So computed outputs for pipes include, so the output expected for pipes include flow rate, velocity, head loss, friction factor, and reaction rates, and water quality. Okay, so these are some of the key output parameters we pay attention to when dealing with pipes. Now the hydraulic head loss by water flowing in a pipe due to friction with the pipe walls can be computed using mostly Hazen Williams formula and Darcy Weisbach formulas and sometimes with Chesey, Chesey Manning's formula. Okay, so it all depends on what kind of parameter you are targeting. Minor losses caused by bends and fittings can also be accounted for by assigning the pipe a minor loss coefficient. So usually we assign a minor loss coefficient to the pipe, which can take care of the bends and also fittings. So this is the basic properties of a pipe. So then we have the pumps. The principal input parameters for pumps uh, is its pump cup. Uh, in, in case of pumps, the principal input parameter is just the pump cough. Okay, so we are just targeting the pump cough. Pumps can be turned on and off at preset times, if you saw just want during the simulations. Variables, uh, speed pumps can be considered. We can have different kind of pumps. Later, we'll just take a look at diff different types of pumps that we have. And then Ethernet can also compute the energy consumption and cost of a pump. All this you can find using Ethernet, using this very simple software. Now we have valves. We have different kind of valves. Valves are used to control the pressure or the flow at a specific point in the network. Okay, so we have valves are located at different points and they are used to control the pressure and the flow of water. Okay, the main different types of valves considered in Ethernet are these. The PRVs used to limit pressure, the PSVs, they maintain pressure at certain level, the PBV, uh, forces a specified pressure loss across the valve and then we have the FCV which is the flow control valve used to control to control the flow in general okay then we have the GPV which is general purpose valve can be used to represent a link where the flow head loss relationship is supplied by the user okay so we'll take a look at this uh, the most basic during our simple example that we have for this so for this we are going to just to signify just to illustrate some of the key examples and applications of this we are going to solve a very simple example of a pipe network in this very simple class so without taking much of our time i'll just attach a video that i have made of an example of a pipe network analysis that i have done uh, for your own consumption so without taking much of our time let's get into it hello guys and welcome back to epic mentorship today's video is an on-demand video i'm going to solve just one example using epanet I've, I've done a video on Ethernet before, but I was requested to do another one solving a simple example. So in today's video, we will solve this question, which is very simple, so direct. A 50 feet diameter tank is located in a city to supply drinking water for a small community. Okay, the tank is 20 feet high and is located 400 feet above the city. The tank supplies water with a constant flow of 4 cubic feet per second during the day. All the nodes in the network are located at 0 feet elevation. All the pipes have a roughness of 100. Use Hazen Williams formula during your calculations. Minor losses are neglected. Table 1 shows the length and diameter of each pipe. Calculate the flow and velocity in each pipe and pressure in each node in the network as shown in figure 1. So figure 1 is the network where we are going to consider our water supply problem. So this is the tank and this is its properties and then these are the other elements. We have the pipes, pipe 1 to pipe 21 and then we have the nodes and this is the pipe configurations. We have the pipe numbering, we have the pipe length which is constant at 50 and the pipe diameter is 12. And then down here we have the water demand on each node okay we have on each node 1 to node 17 all uh, the, the demands are stated clearly 
and then we will set in the second in the first case we'll consider the whole network to, to have a constant supply through uh, true constant demand throughout the 24 hours and then in the second case we are going to consider the use of multipliers where we have the demand varying according to the timeline in the network to start with you can download the epanet software anyone who has watched the v previous video will know how to download the epanet software it's a, an open software free to use and to share with your friends you can download it from this website epa.gov so it's a water research software you can just come over here straight directly and click on the download button you can download either the executable file or you can download the software in a zipped format and then you can unzip it and install but i prefer to download the executable file directly so clicking on this you can easily download it over here it's a very simple and weightless file 3.5 megabyte so once it finishes it's a click through website you just open locate the location of the software and then you can just double click to start the installation and then you can install it directly it's a click through software you can just install it so once you finish the installation you open epanet by just typing on epanet so this is the epanet windows that it opens to us for those who have the basics before must have understood some of the key things that are in this in this software just but for the benefit of beginners you can just give an initial overview of the use of the software so this software is a water distribution network analysis software that it can gives you it can monitor the flow of water within a particular community it can monitor the flow the velocity the demand on each and every node or on each and every location in a particular area so you can design the water distribution network of any community using this small software before you go to the community and run it you can put in all the elements all the features that are needed you can put them before you go to the community so you have the map area this is the network map area okay other things that you have are the other key features like the nodes the tank uh, the reservoir the tank the pipes and the pumps and all that and then you have a range of other things which we can use as we proceed with this example so in this example as we have shown in the network it's a very simple network so as usual the first thing when it comes to pipe network analysis the first thing you need to do is to start by setting up the project defaults to set up project defaults all you need to do is to come to project and then you go straight to defaults so these defaults are going to are uh, features that will appear on all the elements that you have you are going to specify later on in the map so for this one you're going to look at the id levels the 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 most important part here is to make sure that the incremental level is set to one that is the first thing and then you can go to the properties dialog and over here you should make sure you state all the node elevations but in this case it has been stated clearly in the question that all the nodes are at zero elevation so we have them at zero you have to study tank diameter and you have to study tank height and the pipe length other things like pipe diameter you have to state them here and then the pipe roughness in our own example the tank has been stated to have is 50 feet high and it's located at 400 feet above the city okay so we can just specify that it's 50 feet 50 feet 20 feet high and the diameter is 50 all the nodes are on the elevation zero feet uh, elevation all the pipes have a roughness of 100 as in william should be used length is 50 so the pipe length is 50 so we have to spy specify pipe length as 50 the tank height is 20 the tank diameter is 50 and then the diameter of the pipes is 12 pipe roughness is 100 it's given Next is we can come to the hydraulics part and we should make sure that the cubic feet per second is selected, not gallons per minute. So cubic feet per second, this is the flow unit. And then we should use the Hazen Williams. It has been stated in the question that we should use Hazen Williams. And I think at this point, that's all for the uh, defaults. We can click on OK. And then the next thing is we go to preferences, click on the file preferences and then we make sure that at the general button all these are selected except the clear file list blinking map hitler and flyover map labeling confirmed deletions and automatic backup file all these are very important so make sure they are selected the formats i think no need to touch anything here and then you click on ok the next thing is to draw the map 
the network as it is as you see it like this we have the we have it exactly uh, as it is like this we have the tank and then we have the pipes located at different points extending from one node to another so we will draw the pipe just like this the way we have it like this so we we'll start with we we'll start with drawing the nodes we have node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 node 6 up to node 17 so we can just click on the node and then add we just click node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 node 6 node 7 node 8 node 9 and then we have node 10 we have node 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 17 so we can easily draw our pipes accordingly to these uh, nodes and to connect them so all you need to do is to come to the pipe over here click on it and then we can start drawing the pipe links so we start according to the pipe that we have in the description so we have the arrangement pipe 1 pipe 2 pipe 3 pipe 4 pipe 5 pipe 6 okay so we'll draw it according to this uh, but before we draw the pipes we can next is we decide to put in the tank which we have at the top here we click on it and we have it at the top left here so this is our tank so the next thing is to start drawing the pipes so we have we click on the pipe we click pipe 1 straight from one element to another so we click from the tank to the first node and we have our pipe one here and we can have pipe two to click from node one to node two like like that and pipe three click from here to here don't worry about the straightening of the pipes we will straighten them later on and then you can see them looking professional and then we have the next one we just join from here to here from here to here later we will straighten them and we will give the label the appropriate level that is needed so from this to this from this to this let me do it quite quickly okay so this is our network it corresponds to exactly what we have on the map but like I said, don't worry about the, the straightening. I will show you how to straighten them. So uh, to just straighten this network to look professional, all you need to do is to come over to the select object here. You click on it and then you can come and start straightening it just by clicking on an object and then you drag until you, you see it appear quite straight. So once it appears straight, you can click on another one and then you drag until it's straight. You can go to the next one just click and then you drag until it appears straight then you can click on the down one you can straighten as well okay this is straight and then you can click on the next one and then you can drag until it straightens you can click on the next one as well and then you drag Okay, so I think the network looks a little bit much more professional now and we can say it is uh, quite fantastic. So the next thing we should be mindful of is the levels of the elements. So we can enable the ID levels uh, on the map just by coming to view and then you can come to options over here. We can come over all the way to notations and then we can say display node IDs display node values even display link ids and then display link values when we have one so you can once you specify all this you can just click on ok and you can see automatically the the ids are automatically on the 
elements. So this is tank one, which is the which is uh, which is the eighteenth one, eighteenth element that we have put. This is node one, node two, node three, node four, node five, node six, up to node seventeen, and then we have them equally spaced and arranged as we have uh, in the network. So the next thing is to specify the properties, but we can check to confirm that the labelings are correct as we want them. Like the pipes, we have pipe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's supposed to be seven, eight. So you can label them as you wish. We can call this pipe one, or if you want to call it change the label, you can double click and then you can make it P1, maybe for pipe one. Once you select, you, you close, it takes it, pipe one. Okay, this is pipe two, so you make it P2. So you can do the same for all the other ones. Okay, so we have the pipes renamed from pipe 1 to pipe 21. So the next thing is to specify the properties. Uh, okay, let's try to rename the tank as well. So it takes its name. This is the tank. Okay, so we take it as a tank. So we have the tank over here. Alternatively, if you want to put in a text, you can come over and click on this and then you can uh, click anywhere and then you can put, for example, the tank. Once you click on the, when you click out, you can move it to any location of your choice. So this is uh, very easy to use, but alternatively, again, you can do the same from the, you can do the same from the properties dialog to change the name of the prop of the element. Okay, so next is we can specify the properties of each element. So we start with the tank. So we double click on the tank to access the properties. Okay, so these are the X and Y coordinates, which is pending on the allocation on the map. So you cannot touch anything. But if you have, if you know a particular coordinate system that you want to put, you can easily put and then you draw the map just like that. But it's easy to just do it manually to have it uh, well uh, arranged. So the elevation of the tank, we have to specify initial level, maximum level, and then the minimum and maximum level and the diameter of the tank. So based on the question, we knew that it was given in the question that the tank has an initial level of 10, elevation 400, diameter 50, and height 50. So we just specify this in the dialog. Initial level 10, elevation 400, diameter 50, and then we have the height to be 20. The maximum level is 20. So this is correct and so this signifies that we are done with the properties of the tank so you close and then we can come to the elements uh, in the elements all we need to specify actually is the elevation which we have known to be zero and then we have the base demand on each node as stated in the question and then we have the base demand so the base demand is what we will specify on each of the node for our own case we understood that the flow on the from the tank is four cubic feet per second and we have the initial demand on the first node as 0 0.15 so we are going to subtract 0 0.15 from 4 coming in okay so this is what is coming into the node okay so we subtract this and we have negative 3.85 as our base demand on node 1 negative 3.85 Okay, so this is why we need to specify all other things, no need to, to touch. And then we'll go to node 2 the same way. The demand, the base demand is node 2, the base demand is 0 0.18 cubic feet. Node 3 is 0 0.13. 0 0.18. So node 3, 0.13. So we are going to specify the same for all the other nodes. Okay, so I put all the 
a base demand on the nodes on all the nodes as as part in the question that we have so we just replicated it here and we put in the tank properties and then the next thing is to put the pipe properties which we have already specified in the default so the key thing that we need on each pipe is the pipe length the pipe diameter and the roughness and we have already specified this on the default so this is going to be the case for all the pipes except if you have a specific case when you have to specify otherwise maybe during the, within the network there is a specific place where the diameter and the length are varied okay but in this case everything is constant as we have so it's going to be the same for all the pipes so this is pipe one and these are the properties and this is pipe five and these are the same properties so all the three things we need are already stated in the in the pipes so the pipe properties are already stated from the default section so the next thing is okay so at this point uh, maybe we can try to save it so that we can have it as a backup in case of anything we can always click back and open it from where we saved it so to save any epanet project all you need to do is to come over here to file and then you can go to save or save as same way okay so you can go to any location and you just specify the location where you want to save and then you can put in water supply so we save now it is saved to try to run the simulation because we can confirm that all the other properties have been inputted correctly as we have, as we want them from the question everything is inputted correctly so to run is a very simple simulation all you need to do is to come over to the run icon here and just click on it so if it is successful it will show you if it is not it will give you the error message and it will tell you why it's not successful and then you can follow up and edit accordingly so let's try to run and see the run was successful we can just see the run is successful so we can click on ok the next thing is to view the results since our run is successful so to view the results we can come over to the map icon from the browser here and just click on the map and then we can show the results on the nodes on the links and we can see the time period over here so let's say on the node we want to display the pressure so what are the pressure okay so we can see on each node we can see the pressure and then we can see the legend describing the pressure on the nodes and next we can see on the links we want to see the the velocity for example on each so we can see the velocity on each node and we can see the legend describing that velocity so these are the nodes property the results on each node and on each of the uh, pipe element and these are the the, the legend describing them so we can change okay on the links maybe we want to see the flow okay we can see the flow as well on the on the pipes how it varies accordingly throughout the network and so much more so the next is let's try to look at the results on the tables on a tabulated format the results in a tabulated format so all you need to do is to come over to the tables over here and just click on the table and you select the type which is a network nodes so it is on the node and the node and then we can click on ok and we see all the results okay this is the uh, demand in cubic feet per second that we have specified and then this is the head this is the pressure and this is the quality so you can look at the variation accordingly within the ads as we move from one junction to the another up to the tank so this is just the tabulator result and you can print this out and or you can select it and highlight and just print it to your report and the next thing is we can maybe let's say we want to see the result on the links okay we click on links and then we can see the velocity we can see the unit head loss we can see the friction factor we can see the reaction rates since we don't have all these parameters specified as part of the things we are looking for out for so we can even see the quality if we have specified that we wanted this okay so this is the the flow in cubic feet per second accordingly throughout the the system so we can see it across the pipe just like we have seen it here this is the graphical form okay so in showing the data as it is after running the first simulation and saving the work the next thing to note is that we have run this pipe network on a very simple case we assume that the demand on each and every node is constant throughout the time for the 24 hour period that we have which is virtually not going to be possible because well, we need to be realistic with the system 
there are lots of variations that happen within the day sometimes we may have students on the hostel for example if we are designing for a particular school or for a particular community if we may have more people during the uh, a, a time of the day and less people during a time of the day maybe some people have gone to work some have gone to the farm so there will be less usage of water in that community and maybe at a given time when everyone is back we will notice a very great increase in the level of usage of water throughout that community or throughout that hostel or throughout that school depending on the case that you have for us to try to vary the demand on each node according to the time frame we need to introduce the multipliers that's why we have the multipliers given in the question in our own case we have uh, 24 hours variation across the whole hour what happens at one two three up to 24 hours so we're going to input in all these multipliers to signify the level of the quantity of the demand on that particular node all right so to add a new pattern to this particular network all you need to do is to make sure that at the data portion of this browser we select patterns and then we click on new to add a new pattern into this dialog so we can name the pattern we can have it as one and then we can give it a description Maybe we can say variations and then for this case we have to input the multipliers accordingly according to what we have okay so we'll input the multiplier accordingly for the whole period of 24 hours that we are going to consider for this case okay so it's just 24 hours so we'll put in the the multipliers accordingly in the first hour one two two five eight Okay, so accordingly, you put the remaining ones. Okay, so all the multipliers are inputted accordingly, as we have in the question, and then we can see it here. And this is the small multiplier curve that we have, and you can see the average value at 9.80. Okay, so once everything is set up and we've inputted everything, all you need to do is to click on save. And then we can give it a name. You can see save and then we we'll say okay. So now we have inputted the pattern. So the next thing that we can do is to create a time series for our network so that we can run this simulation completely. So to run a time series, all you need to do is to come over to the browser here and come straight to data and then we can come over to options then we select times because we are considering time series plotting so we click on times and then we click on this edit button and then we can put the total duration to be 24 hours because we are considering 24 hours for our case okay once we input 24 hours we close and then at this point we can still run another simulation to see whether it's successful or not but this time it's going to be for 24 hours okay so the run is successful and let's try to see to visualize the results again in a much better way graphically okay clearly we can see the pressure variation on node 4 so we can see it quickly as it appears so this is actually how to plot in the results on nodes you can do the same on the uh, on pipes if you want basically this is how to solve a very simple simulation using the epanet software for a any given water distribution network within a community or from any kind of catchment that you want to uh, design and develop if you like this video kindly hit the like and subscribe button to keep enjoying related videos like this i will see you in my next video bye